Hi there, my name is Vicki Sharon and I'm going to talk to you today about art therapy as a stress management technique. So when I initially heard about the different stress management techniques mentioned in this course, I honestly had a hard time deciding what my final presentation would be until I saw art therapy listed and I felt my little artsy heart sing with delight. According to chapter 12 in the text, Art therapy is defined as a coping technique of self-expression and self-awareness employing various media to describe feelings and thoughts in ways that verbal language cannot. Forms of art therapy. So truly any medium will do and expressing ourselves visually has been recorded all throughout human history, dating back as early as the cave paintings in Lascaux, France. Presently, our options are so much wider than just etchings on a cave wall. From crayons and pencils to paints and clay and incredibly limitless digital mediums with apps and programs on our electronic devices. Have you ever experienced the calming bliss of doodling on a sheet of paper or had the opportunity to do a mandala coloring page? So it's kind of like that, that overly calming effect that participating in art can provide. So the goals of art therapy, um, you get a better sense of identity. Having a cathartic experience helps to uncover hidden feelings, reduction in feelings of guilt, freedom of self-expression and self-healing through mind-body connection. And ultimately to get the most out of your art experience, it's best to have some goals in mind. Get a better sense of your identity through your creative process and have a beautiful and very cathartic experience and be able to cover, uncover hidden feelings that may have been difficult to discuss before, reduce feelings of guilt or apprehension and achieve a freeing sense of the uninhibited self-expression in the process. And by that you experience tremendous self-healing through your artistic mind-body connection. So as you can see from that video, my preferred form of art therapy is acrylic painting in that Bob Ross kind of style. And it's closely related to those like wine and paint events. Um, so it's kind of like that. Um, as previously mentioned, I really, truly love art, uh, specifically painting. And I like to actually affectionately call myself, it's artsy fartsy uh, when it comes to my love of painting. And I truly have been passionate about this um, style um, of artistic expression since a very young age. But through the years, I've always been able to experience a artistic, an artistic cathartic release of emotions just when I pick up a paintbrush. So uh, the lifelong artistic passion for painting that I have eventually actually led me to become an owner of a paint and sip franchise that now exists in almost every part of the state of Florida. Um, this Bob Ross style of painting, it uses water-based acrylic paints, basic brushes on a canvas, and a method that is incredibly easy for anyone to learn and truly even more enjoyable to participate in, especially when I'm leading the group. So what Bob Ross taught me, um, Bob Ross has now an afterlife as a household name. And if you're like me, you may also have many Bob Ross items in your house too. But you know, besides his influence on the merchandising, there is a reason he has reached the level that he has. His calming, supportive and encouraging demeanor with inspiring others to let their inner artist come out to create their own world is captivating. Um, but what does it have to do with art therapy? So as I said, art is therapeutic and the artist should love the process more than the result. And really that's where the magic happens. So it's been said across many different outlets that truly art is life enhancing. Um, in my personal experience with painting as my art therapy um, is that the journey is where the joy lies, not the hurrying to the destination. 
as many of you who are familiar with Bob Ross will be uh, familiar with his saying that mistakes will happen, um, but those mis we don't make mistakes, just happy accidents. Uh, but there's also a great uh, quote that he's been uh, known to say as well, that talent is pursued interest. So if you truly enjoy doing something, um, you're not going to be proficient at it at your first or second try. You got to keep going at it. If you truly love doing it, keep it up, keep going with it. And then there comes the proficiency in it. Um, mistakes are okay to make along the way. It's truly how we learn. There's an incredible amount of self-confidence that can develop within an artist just starting out. So as long as they keep their passion and are equally persistent in their efforts, the results will pay off. So remember, progress over perfection is what's more, more important. You're not really aiming to be a copy machine. So use a photo for inspiration if you need to, but truly don't obsess over the details. It's also important to keep an open mind and what you end up with may be different than what you initially wanted to end up with starting. And that's okay. Um, it's really important in this method to get lost in the sauce. And the term for this is actually um, a great term called flow. So getting in the flow. Um, remember also, you're an artist. Own that. Feel it. Love it. Have confidence in yourself and your abilities no matter the level of proficiency. And again, to tie back to Bob, if you've watched any of his episodes of The Joy of Painting, you know what I'm talking about in his calming, assurative, confidence, boosting kind of um, descriptions that he gives with the different techniques that he talks about. It's truly beautiful. Most of all, it's important to remember to let yourself have fun through this. So my suggestions would be first off to think about your creative space. What do you think are other sensory items that you could use to get the most from your therapeutic painting experience? And for me, there is no painting going on if I don't have my essentials. And these are my essentials. An artistic, an artistic space, for me, that's my garage. I've converted it into a studio space. Music is absolutely essential. I either am listening to it in my ears with my portable device um, on headphones, or I have it playing on my speaker. Clothes matter. I make sure that I wear something comfortable that I'm okay with getting a little bit messy if that happens. And honestly, at this point in my life, most of my clothes have some kind of paint on it and I'm okay with that. Um, lastly, the time limit is up to you. Um, if you operate better with a structured set of a designated time, great. If you want to just have free open expression um, and come back and forth and work on it and then come back, that's fine too. Um, that's all up to you. And really, um, you're the one that's going to be in charge of this process to discover what that creative path looks like for you. So do you feel like you're ready to paint? Here's the supplies that you need, just a general rundown. You're going to need some paints. I use water-based acrylic paint. The level of that paint is up to you. I would recommend as a beginner, if you're a beginner, to start with student level um, acrylic water-based paint. They come in like a bottle. If you buy the ones that are in a tube, they're gonna be a little bit more dense. You do need to add a little bit of water to loosen them up. I tend to stick with the basics because I like to mix my paints a long way. So I call it, even though I know there's three primary colors, I call it my primary five. So we've got your red, yellow, and blue. We've got your black white, you're also open to. Um, I don't discourage others to have additional colors on their own um, when they're creatively painting at their own house. Now, when I do events in person, I only give out those five colors and I demonstrate and describe um, and lead how to make all those secondary and tertiary colors as well as brown and everything else um, to meet the colors that we need. The canvas that you're going to need as well, um, is really truly any paintable surface that has a canvas kind of material on it. That white surface that's on the top is called gesso and that's what you're gonna need to make sure that it doesn't bleed through if it's a stretched canvas without it. So um, really any paintable surface, if you know that it's uh, solid or has a canvas backing, canvas board, canvas sheet, it's up to you. Um, lastly, like I said before, there are some extras that you want to make sure that you have on hand. Definitely need a paint water cup because you want to be able to wash off your brush and change your colors. Um, paper plate is what I would best recommend for a beginner to put all your paints on there unless you have one of those nice little plastic e palettes that you can put all your paints in. Also recommend a rag or some paper towels because it's going to get a little messy as the creative process. Um, 
I also mentioned an apron. Again, highly advocate for the apron. I'm always making a mess with mine. And lastly, we can't forget, we need that creative spark. We need to make sure that we have that playful growth, open mindset, exploratory kind of mentality going into this because it's going to be fun. All right. So um, I'm going to have you, if you would like to, if you're ready to, or if you want to just watch and come back and watch it later, you can do that too. Um, this is going to be a very condensed time lapse, Bob Ross style, simplified landscape that truly you can do at home. So when I start out, I do a uh, loose background. So we've got uh, just full strength blue. I've blotted on some white and just relaxed brush strokes, streaking on a little bit of yellow in between those areas to give the illusion of like a sunset along the horizon. That thin black line, you make sure you do with a fine detail um, of a smaller size brush. Um, just to give the idea of perspective and landscape. We've got a grassy area there. Once you paint that in, slight little brush strokes up to make the blades of grass. Items that are further away are going to be lighter in color, darker are going to be closer to you. Solid streaks vertical will help you get those trees. And again, mixing your brown is going to be making an orange, which is yellow and red, combined with a little bit of blue to get you that nice cocoa brown. Now, lastly, this is this uh, my, one of my favorite techniques is using a fan brush. So when you have that kind of fan brush where it's kind of looks like a, you know, a half moon shape, take that fan brush and make a green. We know how to make a green, yellow and blue. And what's great, don't mix it all the way. Let it kind of exist a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green, a little bit of maybe yellow green, right? And let those color combinations do it in multiple layers. If you want to come back to it, like I said before, it's going to be mostly yellow green to the further back, solid green in the middle, and then more of that blue green, um, which is going to be appearing that it's closer to you. Again, that artsy fartsy word, if I were to give one for this mini time lapse video tutorial, would be perspective. So we have that strong horizon uh, line in the back with the little bumps to signify a landscape um, far off in the distance, those yellow streaks to signify a nice sunset down in the distance as well. And we're just playing with colors, we're playing with lines, we're playing with shapes um, and values and hues and shades and tints. So without getting too artsy fartsy. <laughs> Lastly, if you participate in that, if you wanna try and slow it down and do it on your own, um, when you're done with your painting process, it's important to um, think about how you feel. And honestly, I would even like to additionally challenge yourself. Once you finish with your painting, hold it up for your uh, for yourself to look at it in the mirror and tell yourself, good job, well done. And it may sound tacky and cheesy, but this is that sense of pride and confidence that we have in this process. And I like to um, include this step when I do events myself um, before I close the event out and I have everybody put their hands up and I have them uh, give themselves a round of applause and I have them high five their neighbors to tell them good job, well done. So we can all lift each other up throughout this creative process, um, this really vulnerable, um, you know, confidence, you know, risking type of explorative uh, experience that maybe some of us haven't had since kindergarten is my uh, common experience. Um, regardless of how long you spent exploring your artsy farsy side, I truly hope you found it as enjoyable and cathartic as I always do. Um, because Bob Ross has often said in painting, this is your world. You're the creator and you too can create a beautiful world for yourself through art therapy and painting in general. Thank you.